Good afternoon. It is the 16th of April 2021 and today's video, I, th I said I was going to do one on NCIS, but I'm getting a lot of personal requests via email uh, regarding specific uh, issues such as how many times am I likely to move, okay, if I apply for the federal government, okay, and uh, or apply for a, certainly a federal law enforcement agency. And uh, of course, obviously, this is a huge difference between state and local and federal. State and local, you're going to be in one geographic location, one city or one state for your entire career. And federal, uh, it varies, you know. So how much will you be required to move if you're hired as a federal agent or officer? And the answer is, it depends, okay? What does it depend on? Well, there's several factors, okay? Number one, what agency are you applying to? Okay, this should sound like uh, pretty much, we'll go into each one of them in a few minutes, but it should sound pretty much like um, you know, certain agencies are have a worldwide presence and certain agencies really are just limited to one city, you know, and that is Washington, D.C. Your agency is the first one that you have to look at. The second one is whether you choose a management or non-management career path. A management career path means that you are going to seek promotion beyond the journeyman level. For FBI and DEA, that's GS-13, so that means you're going up to 14, 15, or senior executive. Okay. For the Border Patrol, it's uh, GS-13 and above. For the U.S. Marshals, it'll be GS-14 and above. Uh, Secret Service, it's 14 and above. Those who want to go into management have more moves. Makes sense. The third thing is your interests. Uh, if you are simply interested, you like doing what you're doing as an enforcement agent on the street, you're much less likely to be moved than if you want to train agents at an academy, because that'll involve movement, right? As a GS-13, you can get a lateral reassignment, let's say in my old agency, the DEA, uh, to train agents, or to go overseas, or to work on a special detail. Now, those are voluntary assignments. And if you're interested in them, obviously that will entail a move. If you're not interested in them, then you don't have to do it. You know, it's uh... and the fourth thing is, of course, your flexibility. That's just not your personal flexibility; it's your family's flexibility. What are they willing to put up with um, in exchange for your career? So, what we're going to do is look at each one of these factors um, in a little bit of detail. The agency. Okay, what agency are you going to work for? We'll look at how, you know, where they're situated briefly. And uh, certainly uh, the management versus non-management career path. And then thirdly, uh, you know, the, the interests of the agent. And fourthly, your flexibility. So let's take a look at that. And the first one we're going to look at here is your agency. And we're going to look at a few of the agencies. and. Uh, just give you some general idea of what to look for. And as a few examples, I've selected the FBI and some others. So we'll start with the FBI. And obviously they have a nationwide and worldwide presence. Now coming out of the academy, about 25% of the new hires, they're, they're allowed to fill out a dream sheet where you want to go. About one out of four gets their office of first choice. Okay, So there's a good chance if you're hired by the FBI, you're not going to go where you primarily want to go coming out of the academy. Okay, now in the agency in general, their largest contingent are in this area, which is the DC area. Now, why is that? Well, they have counterintelligence, counterterrorism. The HRT team is here in Quantico. They have training agents in Quantico. They do white collar investigations. Remember, all of the internet traffic, or much of it, much of it moves through Northern Virginia. And they also have squads that do nothing more than background investigation on presidential appointees. So that's a, that's a reason why they have 900 plus agents in the Washington DC field office, not headquarters, the Washington DC field headquarters. Now management agents move every few years from the field to FBI headquarters, which of course is located at the J. Edgar Hoover building. Washington DC, chances that you will remain in one office are very slim and uh, emphasize very. 
Okay, the next one, DEA, you know, my former agency. Again, worldwide presence, offices nationwide. Not as many moves for non-management agents because we don't have this huge contingent in DC. We have an office in DC. I worked there for many years, but it's just, it's a smaller enforcement office. There's much bigger offices in New York, LA, Chicago than there is in street agents in, D, in DC. And if you're content in your first office and you don't seek promotion or other assignments, well then the chances that they're gonna involuntarily reassign you are slim. So let's say, you know, well let's not say, I was hired in Chicago, was sent to Miami. Okay, let's say I wanted to stay in Miami. I never wanted to move out of there. I probably could have retired out as a GS-13 in Miami. Okay, now why is that? If you're doing a good job and you're not putting in for anything, you're not gonna get anything, okay? The only way you would get moved out of Miami is if you really angered somebody. It's very rare, you know, and the US attorneys, they're not supposed to do punitive transfers. It's very rare that something like that happens. So realistically, you know, you would stay where you are hired. Okay, uh, the U.S. Marshal Service. Okay, again, remember you're hired for a particular office or region, and if you're non-management, again, your chances of being involuntarily reassigned, they're slim. Now, again, if you want to go into management, you're going to end up going to D.C. and domestic assignments, and also remember that lateral and promotion assignments are competitive. Okay, which means unlike the FBI and the DEA, which has a career board. Um, these agencies, you actually submit a resume each time and veterans preference applies. With the DEA, it, it doesn't work that way, neither with the FBI, there's a career board. And with the DEA, there's an assessment center. I'll get into that in a future video, but the promotion system is very different, okay? Um, let's look at, you know, the NCIS, the Naval Criminal Investigations in, Investigative Service, which must, much like being in the Navy or Marines, you're going to get reassigned every few years and you're going to be located either in Navy or Marine bases or in DC. So you're going to get Camp Pendleton, Okinawa, Guam, uh, Sicily, wherever they've got a naval base, there's a good chance you're going to end up or have an opportunity to go there. Roosevelt Roads, Puerto Rico, Guantanamo, you know, you could end up there. Uh, Paris Island, uh, Great Lakes, San Diego, you know, good places, not so good places. How about, you know, Fargo, North Dakota? No, <laughs> you're not going to get that. How about Minneapolis? No, they're not, not a lot of Navy up there. Okay, how about, um, you know, El Paso, Texas? Nope, not going to go there. Okay, so again, uh, you know, your agency, where you are going, okay? Diplomatic Security Service, much like overseas duty, it is overseas duty. You're most likely to be home based in DC. Uh, not a lot of domestic assignments, so you're going to rotate in and out of DC. Uh, DC overseas, DC overseas, DC overseas. So you're going to get a lot of moves, uh, but not uh, not moves where you sell your house and move out of the the geographic area, because again, there's only a few diplomatic security service offices in the United States, the continental U.S. And that would be co-located with consulates, you know, in places like Chicago or San Francisco, wherever a foreign country has a consulate. But again, like if you go, want to go to El Paso or something, you're not going to go there, okay? Or Miami, it's just not going to happen. You're probably primarily going to be assigned here in the D.C. area. What about the Secret Service? Well, again, remember, well, I got double numbers here. That's not good. Remember that they're primarily protective in nature, okay? Most agents are in D.C., and nearly all the uniform division is in D.C. The protective details are located at the homes of the president, and vice president and their family members, uh, former presidents and first ladies. Okay. And I guess if you want to be on Rosalind Carter's protective detail in Plains, Georgia, you can probably get that, you know, once you've been in for a long time and you want to slow down. There are smaller offices in major cities throughout the U.S. that do advance for presidential uh, and campaign events. And also, you know, very limited investigations into counterfeiting and entitlement fraud. There's a great deal of travel, TDY, no matter where you're assigned for special agents. So if you're a special agent in the Secret Service, you're going to do a lot of traveling, but not necessarily relocation type traveling. 
just you're going to be TDY quite a bit, more so than I think any other agency. Okay. It depends also on what is your career path. And again, there's a couple of career paths. There's two mainly, management versus non-management. Okay, those seeking promotion above journeyman level will move more frequently than those who do not, and that's true of all agencies. Okay? The FBI, the DEA, ICE, ATF, Secret Service, Border Patrol, they require rotation between field enforcement, supervisory, and staff work. So let me give you an example in my case, okay? I was hired in Chicago, sent to Miami out of the academy, and then a vacancy popped up in El Paso. And the deal was, if you do three years in El Paso, this is a non-management vacancy. We will send you to your office of preference, okay? So I did that. You know, I took my office of preference, and um, it was Bangor, Maine. So I went to Bangor, Maine as a GS-13 special agent, but my wife didn't like Bangor, Maine. So I hopped from non-management to management career path. And that meant a promotion to GS-14 and a move to, you guessed it, the Northern Virginia suburbs, okay? Or you could go to Maryland, you know, but most people go to Northern Virginia, it's just less taxes. But it meant a tour at DEA headquarters, okay? When my tour in DEA headquarters was done in 2001, I had orders to go to El Paso as a supervisor. And what normally would have happened, I would have done several years there and then either gotten a 15 in place or come back here to DEA headquarters to get a 15 and then go back out as a field supervisor as a 15. So you're going back and forth. You're doing a field uh, supervisory assignment, headquarters staff assignment, and that qualifies you for the next grade, which is GS-15. Then you do headquarters staff assignment, and then you do a field supervisory assignment, and that qualifies you for an SES, Senior Executive Service. Count on at least four moves, probably more if you choose management, okay? Your interests, okay? Lateral assignments for journeymen, agents, officers, it depends on your interests. For instance, DEA, if you're a GS-13 and you want to stay in Chicago, there's very limited non-enforcement duties for a career 13 who doesn't want to move any higher. And these would include public information officer, the demand reduction, just say no, the special agent recruiter, the training officer, the firearms officer. Now those are voluntary assignments that are made by the special agent in charge to career 13s. Now, GS-13 agents can, be, can apply for and be selected to go to overseas duty. That's voluntary. So if you're interested in going overseas, you're, you're obviously going to be sent with your family to a foreign country. Now, you keep your house where it was at, but you're no longer assigned to that area. So let's say I'd gone from Miami to Karachi, Pakistan. When my tour in Karachi, Pakistan is up, I am no longer belong to Miami. So they would ask me, where do you want to go? as a GS-13. I said, well, let's say I want to go to Chicago. Okay, we'll give you orders to Chicago. And so then you get a move to where you want to go. But if I wanted to go back to Miami, they would say, fine, just stay in Miami and we'll save the government some money. Okay. They also offer uh, incentives. I, I took advantage of one of them. Difficult to fill offices with promise of reassignment to office of preference. So let's say they uh, are having a tough time. They are having a tough time filling Guam, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and you volunteer to go there for three years, well then God bless you. You do your three years and then the agency, as long as you stay non-management, will assign you where you want to go. So when your three years is up, special agents assignments will ask you, where do you want to go? If there's a vacancy, they'll send you there and they'll do their, their level best, even if it's a post of duty. So let's say you want to go to you know, some small post of duty in Oregon or something, you'll probably get that. Stay out of Portland, that's, that's not a good place. Okay, FBI lateral for GS-13s, okay? Much more variety of assignments. Most of them are in this area though, DC. And there's far fewer GS-13s in the FBI seeking promotion than there are in, let's say, DEA. The average FBI agent retires as a GS-13. The average DEA agent retires as a GS-14. Why is that? Because serving in the FBI as a GS-13 is more easy on your body, how's that, and mind, <laughs> and soul, uh, than doing 
street enforcement narcotics work. And what kind of work could you do in the FBI? Well, you could do foreign counterintelligence work. Okay, you know, you know that is work, but it's not the same kind of work as chasing drug dealers around D.C. Trust me. You could go to training. You know, HRT. Uh, they have groups that do nothing more than background investigations on political appointees. But most FBI agents go to D.C. for a time, and again, more choose to remain at the GS-13 level. You know, so that's. Uh, interesting. The last thing, you know, flexibility. You know, some agencies will will never leave their place of hire. The Capitol Police, Supreme Court Police, Secret Service Uniform, Customs and Border Protection who don't want to be promoted or transferred, um, you're pretty much going to stay where you're hired for your whole 20 years or 30 years. And this factor will also vary based on your personal and family's preferences. So there you have it. Um, again, there's a lot of factors depending where you can go. Uh, again, it depends on your agency, what you know, whether you want to get promoted, whether you want to be a high-ranking agent or officer, or stay at a particular level. Um, certainly, it depends on your flexibility and your interests. You know, some people put in for overseas and you know would love to go to Cochabamba when it was open. It was in Bolivia. And other people say, oh, I don't want to go there no matter what. You know, I don't want to leave Newark because that's where my wife's mother's from, you know, Ooh, you know, whatever. Hey, it is what it is. So um, hopefully this has been some help for those of you who uh, want, want to know. And it's a big topic, you know, but again, you have to look at each agency individually and then look at yourself and, you know, what do I want to do with my life? Uh, what are my interests? And uh, again, there's benefits to being in federal law enforcement, and there's things that aren't benefits to being in federal law enforcement, you know. And the biggest thing is, you know, if you are state and local and you just love where you're at, you probably want to stay there, you know. This may not be for you at all. On the other hand, if you have a department that really isn't supportive, um, or just, you know, or you're likely to work for a department that's not supportive, uh, this might be better a better career move if you have a degree in criminal justice. So uh, right now, again, it's a really tough field, you know, as you all know. So it's, uh, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you.